Okay, so macOS 13.3 is here and this update offers a bunch of new features and changes that I would like to share with you in this video. First things first, we'll begin with the update itself. So for me on my MacBook Pro, you can see that the update size came in at exactly 1.16 gigs and the download size jumped to about 2.27 gigs. Now, if we go into settings and go to general and go to where it says software update here, you'll be able to see that I've updated my device. It just takes a moment to pull up the new build number and as you can see here we have 22e252 that's the build number and hand and system storage is not taking an abnormal amount of storage now let's talk about the new features and changes that are here with this update as there's quite a few so the first one that i would like to show you here if i pull up my notes section here you can see that we have these new emojis that have been added with a mac os 13.3 and in total, there's about 21 of new emojis that we have here. You can see here we have like a shaking head. We have different shades of colors. And you can see also here we have like a moose, a donkey, a black bird. We have a jellyfish, a comb, beads, and peas as well as many other emojis that have been added. So these were added to support the latest Unicode standard. And these are all here with Mac OS 13.3 and the latest iOS 16.4 and watchOS 9.4 version. So if you send them, you'll be able to see on your different devices. Also, when it comes to FaceTime, so I'll just open up FaceTime and I'll draw, drag it on my secondary window. If you go here and you click where it says mic mode, you'll be able to see that there's been updates to the voice isolation mode just to make it more stable compared to what we had before. Now, when it comes to this update, there's also been some minor wording changes. If you go into the settings app and go to where it says general, so you can see here this section that used to say dynamic desktop now says dynamic wallpapers so you can see here just minor wording changes as well as different settings that are now available if you go into the settings as well as the resolution of your mac nothing major also if we go into the home app that i have here on my mac so if you open up your home settings here you can see that this has been revamped to add support for the new home kit architecture and this adds smart home standards adoption and you can always go into the option settings and do a software update if you have a home or a supported accessory in order to have use and be able to use some of the new features that this home new architecture adds also if we go into our settings and go to where it says Siri and Spotlight. You can see here we have the ability to change language and if we click there, you see that we have Arabic right on top and we have Hebrew and among a few others. For example, if you select Hebrew, we'll get a prompt that wants us to confirm we want to change the language and you can see we have new selected voices. This is just a dial that's showing the progress in downloading the new two voices that we have for Hebrew. So you can see once you change that, you get two new voices. It's just taking a moment that, to download the new two voices. And if we also change the language to Arabic, you will see we have two new Arabic accent voices that have been added to Siri. And once these download, you can go back and select them and preview them. So that's Arabic voice one. Okay, and that's the other Arabic voice. If you open up the podcast apps, you'll be able to be greeted by a new splash screen. It just popped up on my secondary display, but if I drag it over, you see what's new in podcast. So you have channels in library and these are easily accessible and you can be able to see your followed shows and more channels within your podcast app. And the browse section has been added and you have improved up next which resumes episodes and removed any that you want to skip. 
should you wish to do that so just minor updates to podcast and it doesn't end there when it comes to musical podcast you can see here when it comes to apple music classical at least for the iphone and later for more devices you can see that apple music classical is now a reality it's going to come pretty soon on march 28th just around about the release of this update and you can see here we have different preview screens on the iphone how this is going to look and if you want to read more information and preview preview this or pre-order this app on your iphone you can do that right here from the app store and that's something that's coming up pretty soon now when it comes to some other changes that are here if you all go into your mac and go to the other section and open up your shortcuts you'll be able to see that we have a bunch of new shortcuts that have been added and this is also in conjunction with the latest ios 16.4 update and those are here too on the mac should you wish to take those out now when it comes to a major application for the mac safari if we go to the about section here you can see that finally the safari version has been updated we have 16.4 and the build that i have here is 18615.1.26.11.22 and this safari version has been incremented from what we had before on mac os 13.2 and it does fix quite a number of things so the first thing that it improves has to do with improvements to the web conferencing audio that has been improved and also we have virtual camera support within this new safari version there's also been some improvements when you go to the develop section or the develop window here there's been web rtc changes that have been enabled and some that have been disabled and if you go to the experimental features you'll be able to see here that certain experimental and develop menu items have been checked off so for example the web codec av1 has been checked off and also we have web rtc av1 that has been checked off we have web rtc vp9 decoder that has been checked off and you can see a bunch of those have been checked off here and mainly it goes to make safari a little bit smoother and stable when it comes to most of these operating systems to wash out some of the bugs that are here now when it comes to Apple Silicon devices so for portable SD or SD extended capacity cards now those will require approval before connecting with macOS so that can be like an external disk or disk utility attachment that you add to your Mac it will now need to to get approval for it to communicate with your Mac after you update to macOS 13.3 if you go into your settings and go a bit down to where it says keyboard i'll be happy to let you know that some things have been touched up in this section so first things first the korean keyboard now supports autocorrect and the ukrainian keyboard supports predictive text input there's also updates when it comes to transliteration support for gujarati punjabi and already keyboards which have been added to this update now also i'll be happy to let you know that if you use the freeform app the new app that apple previewed recently there is now an ability or you have the ability to remove background in an image or even in different objects that you might have so for example if i go to my downloaded images here and i'll just send this one in the freeform app by adding it like that and if we click here you can see i can quickly resize this image and if i wanted to remove the object background i can click on click on the image right here just one click and if i click here where it gives me this image options i have the ability to remove the background and if i click there you can see the background object removal is automatic when it comes to the freeform app and i can drag it and input this into my photoshop when the background has already been deleted already in the freeform app or if i don't want to save these changes that you can just press command z and you see that my background will come back i'll be happy to let you know that we have a new splash screen as you can see here and it said shared library combines photos and videos with 
people closest to you and shares new photos via suggestions and you have copy and paste edits and you have the ability to merge duplicates quickly whereby the macOS operating systems find duplicated photos and videos from one certain place and gives you the ability to delete the duplicates or merge the duplicates in order to save space that's a plus when you use the iCloud photo sharing now also when it comes to this I'll be happy to let you know that if you go into your settings go to general or rather if you go into settings and go to accessibility and if you use voiceover accessibility there's now voiceover support for maps and weather within settings if you go to the accessibility section and click where it says display right there you can see that you have the ability to dim flashing lights and it says video content that depicts repeated flashing or strobing light will be automatically dimmed and if you want you can turn this on if you are a person that's affected by flashing or strobing lights so that you are able to have a stable viewing or usage experience now those are the main new features that are here with mac os 13.3 however this update does fix some bugs as well so we'll begin with some of the resolved bugs that are here so the first one has to do with the trackpad gestures which sometimes were inactive so if you're having issues with your trackpad i'll be happy to let you know that this update resolved trackpad issues that could occur and could make the trackpad respond slowly or at sometimes stop completely responding and also this update resolves issues that have to do with voiceovers so that is in your accessibility when you go to voiceover so it's unresponsive sometimes and that issue when you update to macOS 13.3 has been fixed also this update resolves an issue where asked to buy request may fail to appear on the parents device when there's a purchase in motion so that has been fixed and you can see here some of the release notes that we have have to do with um, new features that have to do with Apple Silicon portables like I mentioned but we do have some known issues that might be able to affect your iCloud so that has to do with upgrade page for iCloud plus and we have a workaround for that which is good and there's some installation issues that says macOS Ventura 13.3 installers fails when upgrading from versions prior to macOS Big Sur and we do have a workaround for that we have some resolved issues when it comes to metal and we have some known issues when it comes to pages number and keynotes and we have some new features when it comes to safari web extensions here and you can see some of the other resolved swift ui issues and also some task manager if changes that we have here so basically those are the new features and some of the bug fixes and the release notes that are here other than that that's about it for me when it comes to mac os 13.3 if you like this video do leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one